In this video I'm going to show you how to connect a USB keyboard or mouse to Raspberry Pi Pico. So the Raspberry Pi Pico is going to be the host device. So this is my Raspberry Pi Pico project. In the last video you would have seen a VGA monitor connected to these pins up the top. Uh, and the next stage of this project is to connect a USB keyboard to this Raspberry Pi Pico because it's going to become a video terminal for my retro computer, my Z80 retro computer. And at the top here you can see I've got power connected to this USB port at the top because I'm still powering it from the USB but this is the first gotcha you if you decide to power through this USB connector up here then you need to make sure that there's no data lines on there so there's a couple of cables there's two, two types of cable you can get you can get like one with data lines in and one, one without data lines if you have the one with data lines then it actually holds those it can actually hold those um, pins the data pins at a particular voltage and if it does that then it will stop the USB port from being able to be used as a USB port. And that's even if you use a Woolwatt socket. Sometimes the actual uh, USB power sockets or power hubs, they actually put voltages on those data pins to indicate how much current they can supply to a charging unit. So, but you don't have to use this port to actually power the device, power the Pico. You can, there's the pin up here, uh, which you can supply five volts to. Um, to power it and you can use one of the ground pins to actually provide the ground to it and then if you did that then you could actually just put a plug an adapter in this top USB port here that adapts from this type of socket to, um, to that type of socket so you can plug in like, USB keyboards and things and that's probably the simplest solution uh, but I want to ultimately mount this on the PCB and um, actually use this top uh, socket to actually power the device uh, because if I'm mounting on a PCB, I might as well just mount one of these sockets on, on the actual PCB itself, and that makes it simpler for me. So what that means for me is that on the back, I need to take the, the uh, connections off the back here. So at the top here, there's three test points, uh, and one is for data minus, one is for data plus, and one is for ground. And you're supposed to use the ground up here because it's closest to the data, data pins. So for the USB connector, use the ground up from up here rather than from any of these pins along here. Uh, and use these data pins here and then you also need to take the uh, the 5 volt from here as well to your USB socket so that's what I've got coming out here and we need to remember is that the actual connections go uh, 5 volts data minus data plus and then ground at the end and you need to get the orientation correct as well And so for the other things which are connected here, so I've got a reset button here. So the run the run pin on these connectors for the Raspberry Pico, the one that's labelled run can be used as a reset, it is the reset pin, but it's called run, I think, because you can actually hold it in reset to take the device into low power. So in an actual circuit, if you wanted to disable the device and keep it in low power, you just keep the, the run pin low. But it also acts as a reset switch. And I, the reason I had that there was because the boot sale switch, I would use that and reset to put the um, device into mass storage mode in order to program it through the USB socket. Well, I can't do that now because I need to use a USB socket for the actual key, USB keyboard. Now, I could sort of unplug from the programmer, plug in the USB keyboard, unplug the USB keyboard, plug the key programmer back in. Uh, but that's a real hassle. So it's the best thing to use is these debug pins down the bottom here to actually program the device and it seems a bit daunting like some special pins to program but actually all you need to do is connect these pins down here to your Raspberry Pi and I've this is a Raspberry Pi 4 but I've also used a Raspberry Pi B to program the Pico and uh, both work just fine uh, and so these go to pin 24 ground and 25 on the on the Raspberry Pi and that's all you need to know because if you've installed the SDK on your Raspberry Pi then you've already got the programming um, commands that you need installed on your Raspberry Pi and it's just a single command to actually program it. But I'll cover that um, later on but just before I go through the actual code that's used to actually run the USB socket. Uh, so then there's this button here and this button here is just a, a mode button for my application that's not required for um, the USB socket tool so you can ignore that button. Uh, and then there's I'm using the USB sorry, a UART port at the top, this UART port zero. 
for sending debug text to my laptop from where I'll be monitoring the actual device. So when I plug in a USB uh, keyboard, you'll be able to see uh, the message that I send from down this US UART connector. And that'll come up on the terminal on my laptop. So you, you'll be able to see the key codes that come up when those I press the keyboard. And I'll also plug in the mouse. And you'll see the uh, the data that comes back from the mouse when I plug in the USB mouse. So just a quick summary over what I've just said. I'm using the USB port at the top just to power the device. I'm taking the power off of the 5 volts off of pin 5 to go to the USB socket I'm using. Uh, on the back of the board, there's three pins that are the other pins for the USB socket and you just need to take those to the socket and, and connect them in the right connect, uh, order for that connection. Uh, I'm using UART0 to send debug messages back because you can't use your USB port. And I'm using the debugging three wires down the bottom here to actually program the device, which is actually a lot easier to program using those because you don't need a reset button and you don't need to disconnect the power or anything. Uh, and I'm doing that because the USB port is going to be used for my keyboard. Okay, so there's a lot going on here. So I've got my USB keyboard here, Raspberry Pi Pico there. It's not powered up at the minute. I've got a Raspberry Pi, which I develop on and upload code to which is connected to Minicom on my laptop, which I'm capturing the screen from. So when I plug in and power up the Raspberry Pi Pico, you see on this on the display that I get the boot up message. I just output some debug messages just to let me know the status of the Raspberry Pi Pico at startup. So I've got a USB connector there. Not, the keyboard's not connected yet, but when I Get the USB connector for the keyboard and plug it in. So on the display, it shows you the VID of the device and the PID of the device, which tells you about the manufacturer and what the device is. And it says it's spin mounted, and it, every time I press a key, it gives you a little report. And you'll see there uh, if I press a shift, it, when you press the key down, you get a report, and when you lift the key up you get a report so if i hold down shift and press a you see a capital a come up and if i just press a by itself you see an a and you see there's other slots there so i can, I can press hold down a hold down s at the same time and so you can hold down multiple keys which is uh good for gaming so you can have uh you can like do uh, game controls on this usb keyboard uh but basically it responds just fantastically uh no problem at all. That would be great in a uh, project. I'll go through the source code in a little while. What I'll do first of all is I'll just show you that you can actually do a mouse as well. So when you disconnect, it tells you it's been disconnected. I've got uh, a mouse here. And I'll plug it in. And it's come up with uh, lots of events. But you can see as I, as I move the mouse around, you get X and Y differences. And if you hold down different buttons, the button reports on the left-hand side there. Settle down now and you're getting reasonable reports. It also, it reports on the middle, on the scroll but, scroll wheel button, but it doesn't report on the scroll wheel movement. So I'm not quite sure what that is. This works in on the, well, I plug it into Linux. So there's something not quite right where it can't really read this particular mouse's scroll wheel. I don't know about other mouses, but it, it does the movement and all the buttons okay. So you could use, use the mouse just fine with the Raspberry Pi Pico. So to connect up the debug port to the Raspberry Pi and to program over it, you need the getting started with the Raspberry Pi Pico document, chapter five. And there's just a couple of things in here that you need to see. So if I scroll down a little bit, and so this is these are the three wires. So you don't need the wires, the three wires at the top, you just need the three wires at the bottom. The magenta, the black, and the cyan wires. Just connect those up to the ports where it says so this text down at the bottom here it says connect it up to port twenty uh pin twenty-four, GPO pin twenty-five, and the other the other one is ground, the black wire is ground. So once those three wires are connected, all we have to do is load the program. Just the this command here, and uh, that will then program the Raspberry Pi from your build. 
and to uh, connect the USB port to the test points on the back of the Raspberry Pi Pico in the Raspberry Pi Pico datasheet uh, chapter 2 the mechanical specification so you just scroll up there and then there's these points here which describe test point one as the ground for coupling the USB signals and then test point two is the data minus for USB and test point three is the data positive for USB and then just take the five volts from uh, the pin at the top of the Raspberry Pi Pico in the Raspberry Pi Pico SDK in this directory here. This is uh, what I used to learn how to use the Raspberry Pi USB port as a as a host device for USB. Uh, so this is where I took the code from. And what you need to do is you need to copy this tusb underscore config h into your project because that configures your project to be used with the tiny USB libraries. Uh, this MSC app is for mass storage example, but this is the one that you want is the head underscore app dot C. And when I go through the source code in my project, uh, I've taken a trimmed down version of what's in this file. And the main dot C shows like the overall, um, how the project is put together. So in the project C make lists file, there's a couple things you need to do. In the target link libraries section, you need to add tiny USB underscore board that needs to be there, whichever whether you want to do a host or a device. And then tiny USB underscore host if you want to create a host, or tiny USB underscore device if you want to create a device. And then if you ever used USB for debugging, you have to turn that off, say it's zero. So I've never actually used USB for debugging. Uh, you can use UART for debugging, so set to one. Uh, mine's set to zero because I'm using the UART or for um, another purpose for actually testing code. And the main part of your code, so you only need one line of code in here to handle the USB device, but at the top you need a hash include tusb.h. And then as you come down, there's an initialization part of your code. And as part of the initialization, you need board underscore init and tusb underscore init and they need to come at the very top so I do that even before the standard IO init all um, because if they don't come at the very top then then they don't initialize properly uh, and then the one line of code that you need uh, now they usually put in their main loop so I've got a main loop here for my code but I didn't put it in there, my, in there myself because I'm actually running a timer uh, but you, the line of code you can put in your main loop. Um, uh, but what I've done is I've put it under my timer and it's this TUH underscore task. And you have to call that repeatedly, normally in your main loop. But if you've got a timer which runs really regularly, then you can place it in the timer as well, or well, instead of the main loop. So the tiny USB libraries work off a bunch of callbacks and I've separated them out into this file. And again, you need the to include uh, tusb.h at the very top of the file. And then you need to provide the callbacks which it will recognize. Uh, one, one is for mounting a device. And then I'm mounting the device as well. And all of this, this, this simplified code that I've got in here is just basically what I've taken out of the example and I've just removed the comments and, and made it more in, my, in the kind of style of my programming. Uh, then you need something to receive a report. And the report is just a binary set of data which uh, the USB device sends to you. And it's usually bytes of bytes of data. And you just interpret those bytes as to keystrokes or what, however they come back. But again, if you look in the example code which I've pointed to, it calls this uh, interface protocol function which tells it what protocol it is it then decides if it's a keyboard then it handles a protocol in a certain way or if it's a mouse it'll, hand, it'll handle the protocol in the in the mouse in the standard mouse format of protocol and it then does a default and it says oh this is generic and so it just handles it as as like a binary thing which it doesn't really understand and then also i found that i have to include callbacks for these items as well because it calls this one back 
and in order to get it to compile you need to provide these as well so again mount and unmount and a cdc transfer function to call back but they're all the functions you need to supply and if you look in the example which is in the sdk which i pointed to earlier in this this um video there's a the directory i'll put the directory name in the description as well so you can refer to the directory name of the example code that comes with the sdk uh, and basically this file that i've got here i've just taken out taken out all the comments and renamed some of the variables to make it more my kind of style of thing but this is basically the same as what you've got in in that example code 